Hello everybody, Image here, and this chess position is one from a game that I played about a year ago on chess.com with correspondence time controls. So each of the players had about three days per move. So it's a lot of time to think moves over. And after 25 moves, this is the position in the game. I'm playing white. My opponent, Crux, was at the time rated a little bit lower than I was. Um, he was 1779 at the time, I was 1885. And since then, he's really been playing a lot more correspondence chess than me, and he's been doing quite a lot better. His rating has shot up to somewhere in the 2400s. So um, he's no slouch. And after 25 moves, we reach this position, which is, I would say, probably mostly equal, maybe a slight advantage to black, because um, if we look at the sort of imbalances in the position, I have a knight and he has the bishop, and the bishop in an open position like this is probably going to be a bit better. And he also has a slightly safer king, and he has his rooks nicely coordinated, whereas my king is blocking my rooks from working with each other. So I think that black has a more active position. He's, um, he's the one who's really got a lot of the threats. And I wasn't super thrilled with this. So when I was considering moves, I thought, well, one option would be to trade off the knight for the bishop. Maybe to just go for a series of exchanges, trade off one of these sets of rooks too. And after this, not really sure how to proceed. It's a bit, um, it's a bit tricky, really. What does white do to, you know, attack or create any kind of pressure? The position just seems like it's material equality and not much doing because even though black has this isolated pawn that could be a weakness, it looks like black is going to be able to um, to just defend that pretty um, indefinitely. So it looks like a pretty looks like a pretty empty and kind of dull position after that. And I mean, maybe that's not such a bad thing coming out of a position where I felt slightly behind. But I figured I have three days to think about this. Let's see if I can come up with something better or failing that more interesting. So let's go back to the original position here. And I came up with something that was definitely interesting. I think it might have even been the best move in the position, but I'm not sure, objectively speaking. Pause the video for a few seconds and see if you can find what I played. I'll reveal it in three, two, one, zero. I actually made this rook sacrifice with rook takes h6. And this required a bit of foresight and analysis to um, to do, to make myself think that this was justified. And first of all, why would I make this sacrifice? Assuming that black accepts the sacrifice, taking with g takes h6. Okay, so black accepts. This line now is open to black's king. And that's all well and good, but these are the squares that I can deliver check on to take advantage of that line. They're covered. So what have I done by opening this line? Well, the thing is, I'm not looking to deliver a check right away. Now I can trade off this bishop. And here, if the rook recaptures, then quite simply, queen g4 check. And now I'm forking his king and his rook. Once his king moves, that rook drops. He might slip his queen into this active position, but I'm basically up a pawn after sacrificing a rook. I, it was a temporary sacrifice. I get the rook back if we go through that line where I exchange the bishop and he recaptures. That's what happens then. But he doesn't have to recapture right away. One option that black has is to pull his rook into d8, and now I don't have that fork, and he's threatening to just take the knight. So I don't have that fork, but I'm threatening something else. After queen g4 check, king h7, 
queen f5 check, king g8. And the reason he goes to g8 is that if he goes to g7 instead, then queen f6 check, and he drops this rook. So after he goes to g8, then I just have this draw by repetition, and the game ends in a draw. So rook d8, I sacrifice the rook, but I get a draw for it. So not bad in a position where I thought I was still behind. And I didn't realize this at the time, but Black's actually got a third move, and this is something that sort of a little bit of computer engine analysis of the game turned up later. And that's that after knight takes d7, Black can play rook e6, and the idea is that if I play for this check, Black can just block it. And in that position, Black is suddenly up the rook for the knight and pawn. So Black looks a little bit ahead here. But there's an interesting problem. This also runs into a draw by repetition because after knight c5, this rook has to move because it's being threatened. And so the intuitive idea might be oops, to move it to g6 to prevent any of these queen g4 shenanigans. But if, if black does that, then rook d7 is simply crushing because there's no way that black can retreat his queen and keep the defense of this pawn at the same time. And if this pawn drops, then the game is pretty much over for black because basically after queen takes f7, the black king is going to go into the corner and get checkmated. So that's pretty terrible. The best that black has in that position is actually to just give up his queen for the rook and here, white is just clearly winning. So after knight c5, black's best is just to pull the knight back, sorry, to pull the rook back. And after he does that, well, oops, wrong diagram there. After he does that, then the knight goes back to d7 and it resumes this threat of the perpetual check from white on starting on g4. So black has nothing better to do in this position than to either play rook to d8, which we saw leads to the, um, leads to the perpetual check and the draw by repetition, or to just play rook e6 again. And if he plays rook e6 again, then the knight just goes back to c5, and black has nothing better than to just repeat the position, and the game ends in a draw. So, um, in all of these situations, the game just ends in a draw if black accepts the sacrifice, or white ends up just simply up a pawn and in suddenly a winning position. So, that's the idea behind the sacrifice, and I thought that was really cool when I played it. So, I play the sacrifice, and my opponent here got kind of freaked out by this, and he didn't take the sacrifice. Instead,